So if you want to display text in your application, you can use text blocks as we have seen in the last two videos. But there is also another control that you can use and that is a label. So a text block is useful if you want to display a large amount of text, but a label is great if you just want to label something. So for example, a text like username or password that you have on top of the text box where you can then enter the text. That is where the label would be used. And in this video, we're going to look at how to use the labels. My name is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu. Let's get started with the video. And also hit the like button, please. It really helps us out. The label is very similar to a text block, at least at first glance. And let's just create it and then see what the actual difference will be. Okay, so I'm going to create a new WPF project and I'm going to call this one label demo. All right, so let's go down to our project here and inside of our main window XAML file, that's where I'm going to access my label or create a new label. This label now at first glance will look like a text. So I can also write something like hello world here. Okay, so it will basically look like text and it is similar to a text block. But the difference is that here we don't assign a text property, but we're actually assigning a content property. So here, let me go over and assign a content. You can see here this keyword is content and you can assign a string, but you can also assign different types of controls in there as well. So for example, I have hello world here. This is the default content statement. So you can see you, you can put it directly into the label tag. So in between here, the opening and closing tag, or you can put the, put the content as a property for the label as well. Okay, now let's actually use the advantage of a label. And that would be to use controls as the label content. So what I can do here is I can use a stack panel inside here. And the stack panel will be, and this will actually not be inside of the label tag, but inside of the label inside of, so not in the label statement, but here inside of the label tags, I will put the stack panel. And now I can put, for example, an image in here. And this will have the source of a certain link that I am going to use. So I'm going to use this image here. This will just be a mail icon. So I'm going to copy this address and this will now be my source that I'm going to use for that particular image. Okay. You can take any image that you want there. And then I can also use access text, which will then be text that will be displayed next to it. So I'm going to set the access text text to something like message. Okay, so let me scroll this down a little. This image is a bit too big. So let me set its width and height to, let's say 60 width. Okay, that will be fine already. So you can see it's, it breaks it down, maybe even something like 16 pixels, super small. Now maybe this should be 32. Okay, that should be fine. Okay, so this will be then the image and then the text will have a font size of let's say 32 as well. So this means I need to change the orientation to a horizontal orientation. Okay, so this could be how you use a label and you see this here is still a label. So we're not using a text box here, but we can put text in there, but also other controls as you see here. So we're using a stack panel control and then we're using an image as well as access text. So access text is basically just text, simple text here. And the stack panel is just a container that allows you to stack elements on top of each other or next to each other, depending on the orientation that you're using. Horizontal will stack elements next to each other and vertical will stack them on top of each other. But I have a separate video only in stack panels where we're going to go in more depth into stack panels. Quick pause. This video is sponsored by one of my courses. So you're learning something about WPF in this video and 
I have a complete C Sharp masterclass which teaches you a lot more about C Sharp if you feel like you need to learn more about C Sharp to understand everything that's going on. And then if you want to learn everything you need to know about WPF, definitely check out my WPF course. It's a 15 hour course which will teach you everything you need to know about WPF, building an entire Windows Store clone using my apps in order to achieve this Metro design, which is the design language, so to speak, for the latest Windows 10 applications. You can find a link in the description down below and there you get a huge discount, so don't miss out. Get one of the courses or both of them now. And now let's get back to the video. So now what would make sense is to use a text box here, not the text block, but a text box where the user can then enter text in there. And this will not work for a grid, so I'm going to make this a stack panel as well. Okay, so now I have the message here at the top and then a text box where the user can enter something. And this text box could have a font size of also 32, so it's going to be a little bigger. All right, so this will now be something where we can enter text and once we run this, we will see it's a little better. So there we are, now I can enter text here. And this doesn't look very nice. Having a little bit of a margin for my text box would make it look a little better. So let me add a margin of, let's say 16 pixels towards all directions. And the label here should also get a margin of 16 pixels towards all directions, except for the bottom. Okay, so 16, 16, and here I think it's also 16 and zero. Okay, so it will have 16 pixels towards the left, top, right, and zero towards the bottom. Okay, so that's what we're creating here. That is the distance between this text box as well as the label. All right, so if we run this once again, this will look a little better, I'd say. So there we are. Now we can go ahead and write our message. So, dear mm, sir or madam, and I hope I wrote it correctly. How is it going, bros? Going, bros. Something like that. Okay. So that's what the advantage of a label is. A text block doesn't offer this feature. Okay. Now, some more differences that a label has towards a text block is that you can specify a border for your label. Okay. You can't do that for the text block. So here I could define a border and I'm going to set the border thickness to one pixel, for example. Now this will create a border and now let's also add a border brush, which I will use black for. So now we have a black border surrounding it. Okay. So that's something that the label allows us to do. And then we, as you see, can use other types of content as we've seen with the stack panel, including images and text and so forth. And then you can also use the template content through a content template property, which is an advanced topic that I'm not going to go into in this video, but we're going to see later. And you can access keys to give focus to related controls. So you can, for example, focus on either the label or focus on the text box that you have underneath. Okay, so what is focus? Let's quickly run the application. So when I click in here, you can see now it's in focus, which means now it will have a blue background. This is for the text box. And you could now assign those two so that the label will also be connected to the text box. So when the text box is in focus, the label will also be in focus. All right, so that's it for this video. Now you have seen how to use labels or what you can do with labels. There is, of course, a lot more to know about it. And we're going to see how to use events later on in the course and then you will, for example, also understand how to use this focus functionality of a label. Thanks for watching another part of our WPF series. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like. And if you loved it, then leave a sub. And also check out the next video in the series. You can always refer back to the playlist to find the next video that will help you out with WPF. And also, if you want to become a real pro in WPF, then check out the link in the description to get the full course.